Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We are going to continue on with this week's theme of the mid-year roundup, looking at some of y'all's favorite tracks that have come out this year so far. Today we're going to be diving into a band who I don't think I've heard of before. They're called Demonstration of Power. We're going to be looking at the track Five Eyes, which is a single from this year. In fact, it didn't seem like they had an album recently at all, but they've had a series of singles come out over the past couple of years. At least that's what it looked like on Spotify. So, uh, yeah, I find that to be interesting, but also very trendy. Let's dive into this and see what demonstration of power is bringing to the table today. Interesting to hear the guitar riff line up with the vocals. Small tempo increase, very different riffage right here, relying a lot less on the pedal tone. Interesting to have the blast beat 16th note picking section to be, what, two bars long tops? So this is our, actually the, uh, this was the intro riff. Has the snare been turned off this whole time? Yeah, that was a smooth retardando. Quick, but smooth. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think this is going to be a very lengthy analysis segment. I don't really have a lot to say about it, I think. This is a rather straightforward uh, metal track. What kind of metal would this be? It kind of feels like death metal at times, but given the vocals, it makes me think of hardcore, which makes me think is maybe metalcore, like really early metalcore, not the metalcore of the 2020s. 
Uh, I guess that's technically melodic metalcore, but the genre's evolved a lot over the decades. Regardless, um, it, it feels rather straightforward to me. A lot of the guitar work isn't really riffy in any melodic sense. A lot of it is there for texture and atmosphere. It's usually designed to give us, well, right at the beginning, we have the really slow moving single note ideas between the two guitars. They give us some harmony at times, but mostly it's there to create this heavy, ominous weight. And that's really what every single guitar section does in here. Now, sometimes they achieve that weight in different ways. The beginning, it's these long held out notes. Sometimes we do move with the, with the uh, pitches a little bit, such as in the middle section, I guess it was about a minute and a half in, when I had mentioned, oh, you know, we're not relying on pedal tone anymore. That was a riff that actually had a lot of pitched movement in it, just constantly moving all around. But the second riff that we heard had a ton of pedal tone in it. Constantly, well, man. I'll come to that later. It just used a lot of pedal tone. Um, and the bass pretty much did exactly what the guitars did, just on a lower end, giving it this extra weight and power and body, just really filling out the space, but not doing anything that would counter it or embellish on it or add any sort of complexity. Um, the drums, very consistent of what they do. They're heavy. They usually have an accent on two and four. And yeah. There's a couple of different drum patterns, but there's usually nothing spicy or complex to it. It's very serviceable. It does the job of having weight, having intensity. The dude's just beating on this drum. The attacks are so powerful. And rhythmically, it is rather straightforward. We don't really get anything syncopated or, or wild in that regard. And to me, the vocals, they're not my favorite kind of vocals. I find them to be a bit bland. But they certainly have an element of power and strength to them to give this further idea of weight and intensity. And it's everything just leans really well into this concept. And so, well, let me transition this into another topic. I was going to say that everything ends up feeling very similar to me. But it's not like the song is identical from start to finish. In fact, there is a point, probably about two minutes into the song, all I could think about was, how are they cramming so much music into three and a half minutes? It honestly felt like I had listened to a five or six minute song by the time the track had ended, simply because there was so much music here. And it's not all of it was was lengthy or, or full segment. I mean, we had so many ideas that were there almost as a transition concept. There is that one blast beat and 16th note picking thing that I, I pointed out. It lasted for like a bar or two. It was there just to add more things into the song. I don't really know what its job was structurally. It didn't really feel like a transition, but it was a moment between two sections. And, and yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, but it was more music. It was a way to cram another section in here. In a lot of ways, this song feels very linear to me because aside from one point towards the end of the track where I pointed out, Hey, that was the first riff we heard in the song. I don't think I heard many ideas that were repeated. It, it sounded like they had 15 to 20 riffs and instead of saying, oh, that would fill us out for a whole album if we just, you know, one riff for the verse, one riff for a chorus, and, uh, you know, a riff for the bridge, and we call it a day. But, you know, in metal tracks, even your bridge can just pull back to the verse riff. You put a solo over it. So, I mean, you end up with 20 riffs. That could be 10 songs worth of music right there. And they're like, we're going to shove it into one song. And it's not even going to be an epic. It's going to be three minutes long. This is single material right here. It is just bonkers. So while the entire song does feel aggressive and weighty and in your face, extreme, and it kind of carries that singular vision throughout most sections here, there is a lot of things changing. There's a lot of contrast if you're paying attention to those nuances. But there are some very deliberate and obvious changes as well, such as all of the tempo shifting that goes along in here. 
I'm pretty sure the whole song takes place in 4-4, so we don't have any time signature tomfoolery going, going on in here, but there are a lot of tempos. And the thing is, is you might not even notice all the tempo changes because there's a few of them that only increase 5 to 10 BPMs or decrease 5 to 10 BPMs just to add that little extra spice. Some sections might feel a little bit more energetic than the one that came before it, but it doesn't really feel faster. It's just more driving, more energy, you know. It feels the same, but I want to headbang harder now. I guarantee most of those moments were small tempo changes that you can feel, but you don't notice. It's very neat. It actually shows up in a lot of music all across the board. It's a nice little uh, trick that uh, producers and composers, well, I guess more so on the composer side, can use in order to make a section feel different without feeling different, if that makes sense. Um, we get some of that in here, but there's also some fun tempo shifts as well. One of the first ones I felt, we were at a tempo, we did a small retardando to, to shave off maybe 15 BPM, something noticeable and feeling, but instead of rising back up to meet that same one we were at, we actually went above it, maybe about 5 or 10. And so not only do we have the normal extra energy that comes from that small tempo increase, but we also have it contrasted against something that felt much slower. So it almost feels like we've been rubber banded and it feels more intense because of that. Really, really smart way of going about doing that. We have that wild retardando at the end that runs us to that final doomy sort of tempo to wrap up the final 10 seconds of the song or something to really drag the song down. There's so many tempo shifts in here. It is bonkers. Um, yeah, just wild stuff. Um, I had mentioned the guitar work and we talked about pedal tones in that second riff. And I was like, I was going to say something. I said, I save it for later. Now is the later. That's that first verse. I think it was when the vocals came in, the vocals were a bit sparse. Bar one, we would have two or three syllables, and then bar two, we would have a full sentence. It'd be like eight or nine syllables. And then we go back to the sparse one, just a couple of syllables, and then a lot. What's really interesting here is that the guitars will play the melody alongside the vocals. When the vocals say a syllable, the guitars play a note every single time. However, if the vocals aren't saying anything, the guitars will play eighth note pedal tones, I think it is, and just like and they fill in the space where the vocals aren't saying anything with just one note. But I think it's wild that they decided to pair the melodic element with the vocals. I thought that was really cool, some cool texture layering, and it gave me some purpose to the pedal tone writing. It, uh, because usually it just kind of feels random to me. Why did we put? Why, why did we run on this single note for a long time? Because it sounds cool, right? It's just like if it, it's it's the gut feeling. It sounds cool to write. It sound it feels good to play. So that's what I you know that's what I wrote for my guitar riff. But here it actually musically makes sense to me outside of just that general rule of cool thing because we have the texture layering that goes along with it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and like I said, it, it gives a little bit of compositional purpose to an idea that sometimes doesn't always make a lot of sense to me, but it's very predominantly used in metal. Uh, speaking about the vocals, there is a second vocalist in here, I think. We heard some group harshes at the beginning, and then we had one line, I think, 45 seconds in or something like that. A um, bit of a higher pitched yell, a, a compressed yell, uh, rather than the growls that we have through most of it. I wouldn't mind hearing more of that, I think. I, I like layered harshes in general, but it's a very interesting harsh style that I would, I would need to listen to a little bit more and get acclimated to. Regardless, I think it's cool they have multiple vocalists, and I do kind of wish we had heard more of it. And I think that about sums it up. It's a very rule of cool, aggressive track from start to finish. And 
it's one of those songs where right at the start you hear the first 10 seconds and you either know if it's going to be your jam or not. There's nothing in this that changes. They put up who they are at the very first second. And if it's your jam, you're going to love every minute of this. If it's not, there's probably nothing in here you're going to like. And, you know, I, I have respect. A lot of respect for a band who's very upfront with stuff like that. Is this my cup of tea? No, not really. There's some cool things in it, but it is just not what I usually reach for when I listen to music in my in my personal time. But I think they still knocked it out of the park, and if you enjoy this heavy abrasive music, might be a, a group to keep your eye on uh, and, and see what they're releasing. Maybe this year, maybe next year. Uh, they have two tracks on this single, though, so if you enjoyed this, there's another song for you to look into. Let me find some lyrics for it, and then we're going to wrap this video up. So you want to hear something funny? They don't have anything on Genius. No one has uh, submitted the lyrics there. So I, I checked a few places, ended up looking at their Bandcamp, and they do have lyrics for this single on Bandcamp, but only for the other track, track number two. This track they don't put the lyrics up for. So I couldn't find any lyrics at all for this song. And Five Eyes, to me, is only about the uh, the Intelligence Alliance. So I don't know if that's necessarily what this song is about. <laughs> Could be a pro-privacy song for all I know. But uh, yeah, how, how that might relate to the music of the song. I mean, probably it doesn't. They write the kind of music they write, and the vocalist, the lyricist writes the kind of lyrics they write. But, you know, without knowing exactly what it's about, everything else, anything I would say is just a hypothesis. So we're not going to go that direction, we're just going to wrap the video up at this point. Those are my thoughts on Demonstration of Power's Five Eyes. What do you think of this track? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, perspective about it. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. Take you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, we have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.